right now is versus self-control always starts with the thought, I should. Number three, self-care feels easy versus self-control feels hard. Number four, self-care makes you appreciate yourself versus self-control makes you distrust yourself. And number five, self-care takes planning and conscientious effort, whereas self-control is all about compulsion and ingrained behavior. So with all of that being said, how do you maintain yourself, regulate yourself, get yourself to do the things that you know are good for you without being harsh or overly critical or, you know, exuding a bunch of self-control? Well, the first thing that you have to do is you really have to look at how you're teaching yourself that you are last, that you're the least important priority. And I want want you to really take a moment and kind of look at your day, look at what you've been through already, maybe in the last couple of days, and start looking for examples where if I were to come and hang out with you and just observe you for a day or two, Where would I start to point out the ways in which you are telling yourself you are last? You're last on the list. Like maybe you have 400 emails that are unread or not dealt with and you're you're internally telling yourself that I'm the last thing on my list. You know, like I'm always the last thing on my list. So you get to that 400 email inbox and subconsciously you're thinking to yourself, well, damn, how far down on this list do I have to go before you'll actually take care of me? That's internally happening. And you have to really be conscientious of where that's happening in your life. So a couple of ways that I've seen a lot of people unconsciously teach themselves that they are last on the list is that they are constantly rescheduling or overbooking themselves. They constantly put off the healthcare visits, the basic, you know, dental visits, vision visits, they, they always diminish their own health and their own well-being over other people. They're constantly saying how busy they are. That's a huge red flag. If you feel overwhelmed and busy to the point where you don't have a moment in the day to yourself, that is a huge red flag that you are literally conditioning and teaching yourself that you are last on the list. And when doing that, you're really making a very dangerous pattern that can really lead towards a path of self-harm. And secondly, you have to decide what needs your A-level attention in your life. This was a powerful exercise that I recently went through. I'm sure you've probably already heard about this. I read it in a book or heard it on a podcast. I can't quite remember. But it was talking about Things in our life that deserve our A++ perfect level work and things in our life that deserve the B where it's like you put effort in but you're not like 100% all in and then your C level work which is like you're doing the bare minimum to get by. And when I did this exercise, the first thing that I decided goes on the C level list is the laundry. Like look, I'm the kind of girl that lives out of a laundry basket. Look, you're going to come over to my house. You're going to see there's always a load in the dryer. And I'm, I have no shame about that. I just do too many fun things outside of the laundry that that does not deserve my 100% attention. I'm not washing, drying, folding, and ironing all in the same day. And that would be A-plus effort. But the things that do deserve my A-plus effort, boy, they sure get my full 100% attention. So really, maybe this week, take time to do that for yourself. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't even have to be profound. But I'll tell you what, I was pretty shocked at what ended up on the A list versus what ended up on the C list. And it's not what you'd think. Third, you're going to need to develop a really loving guidance system that doesn't tell you what to do and finger wag at you, but that wants to expand the conversation to how you take care of yourself and how you fulfill your obligations. And this is extremely important because the way that you 
teach yourself how to get shit done and the way you conduct yourself, the process by which you do these things is so much more important than the outcome. Because yes, you can grind yourself to the ground to put out an amazing product or an amazing work or an amazing meal. But the way you got there is teaching yourself that you are not worth it. And that is what's going to hurt you in the long run. Last, you've got to stop the shoulds and the used to and the comparison and the grinding. Nobody needs you to show up exhausted and burnt out and horribly mistrusting yourself. Everyone in your life, think about this right now, everyone in your life, your bestie, your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your kids, your partner, they all need the best version of you to show up when they need you. And if what's showing up is this half-dead zombie version of yourself because you can't seem to take care of yourself and get your shit done... I want you to go back and listen to this episode. I know I railed through it really fast, but that's because I know a lot of you are so intelligent. You're going to grab these little nuggets and you're going to run with them. But if you are really feeling ground into the floor right now by everything that's going on, I really want you to go back, listen to the episode again, and look for examples in your life where you're feeling loving versus judgy. Or where you're feeling the distrust versus the appreciation. And really start to look at little micro ways you can change that. All right, friends. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you have a story you'd like to share and you want to be on the show, please email me. It's Chris, K-R-I-S, at selfcareissexy.com. Okay, we got some really great content coming your way. So stay tuned. And remember that self-care is sexy. We're giving you permission to put yourself first.